pledge of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. everyone. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Roll call, please. Mr. Hampton. Here. Mr. Law. Here. Mr. Loomis. Here. Mr. Redfern. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Walters. Here. First on the agenda this evening, we have Sean Brooks here to discuss CDBG and ABCAP and yeah, so thank you all for your time. Would you like me to step up to the lectern, or is it okay if I sit? Okay. Well, just, we can hear you. I'll just stay right here where I'm, where I'm at. And the reason I'm here tonight, and I'll just take a few minutes of your time, is um, because this community directly benefited from community development block grant dollars in the last cycle. Um, we're required to come back here and do this fair housing overview with you. It's directly tied to the eligibility for those dollars. So that's why I'm here tonight, if it doesn't make any other sense then it is a connection to those projects that happened in the last cycle for community development block grant dollars okay and essentially I'm just going to read you this paper and then answer any questions about fair housing what is the fair housing act the fair housing act was passed in 1968 and it's a federal law that prohibits discrimination in home sales financing and rentals based on race color religion sex or national origin there are a few other classes, but those get added later down the timeline here. Uh, the Fair, Fair Housing Act was a part of the original civil rights legislation. It was amended in 1988 and expanded the coverage of the Fair Housing Act to prohibit discrimination based on disability or familial status as well. Those were not previously considered protected classes. The Fair Housing Amendments Act also established new enforcement mechanisms to assist victims of housing discrimination seeking justice. Ohio also has a Fair Housing Act and it adds a bit to the federal law. So let's go over quickly. The federal law covers race, color, religion, national origin, sex, disability, and familial status. The Ohio housing law adds a few to that and those are ancestry, and military status and then a local government could also add further protections if they felt it necessary for their residents. Um, what qualifies as discrimination, uh, discrimination in Ohio? According to Ohio's Office of Housing and Community Partnerships, housing discrimination doesn't just mean that you've been denied a rental of a dwelling. Discrimination can also include a landlord withholding or misrepresenting information about available housing, steering, setting higher standards of creditworthiness for minorities, or quoting different prices, terms, or conditions for financing, insurance, or sale. The Fair Housing Act safeguards against the following discriminatory practices based on class. The refusal to sell or rent housing, the refusal to negotiate for housing, making housing unavailable, denying a dwelling, setting different terms, conditions, or privileges for sale or rental of a dwelling, providing different housing services or facilities, falsely denying that, a ho that housing is unavailable for inspection, uh, sale or rental when it is actually available, persuading or attempting to persuade or influence an owner to sell or rent to someone other than the applicant, denying anyone access or membership in a facility or service related to the sale or rental of housing, including brokerages or multiple listing services. So that's what it protects against, and if anyone would have a complaint such as that, what we would do through our office is we would help you determine whether it was a fair housing complaint, and then if we felt like it was something that you should report on down the line, we would actually assist you with contacting the Ohio Civil Rights Com Commission or the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development um, and help you file a complaint with either one of these entities, or we may reference you to some legal assistance. Generally. Um, fair housing is tied in with some landlord tenant law I'm not an attorney and I'm I'm not gonna provide legal assistance or legal advice I'm simply there to help you fill out the complaint form or to maybe guide you to the resources that you might need so that's what fair housing is what the fair housing law is federally and in the state of Ohio um, that's what I have for you tonight other than if you do have someone who has a question or complaint we represent the Fair Housing Consortium for Perry County, and you could reference them to our office. They could simply say, 
they want to talk to someone about fair housing and they would land at my desk and I would take the help call so so that's fair housing and as interesting as it is I think community development block grant dollars are probably what all the communities are really interested in so if you don't have any fair housing questions I can answer any questions about just community development block grant dollars in general I know there's generally some questions there so Council. anyone any questions with the HAPCAP, you involved with that as well, HAPCAP, you said? Yes, sir, I work for HAPCAP. I work in the Community Development Division. Now, is there another round of grant money from HAPCAP coming again? Or so we were on the end of the last round. Yeah, so depending on what grant funding you're looking for, you're talking about just like the development side of things like mm -hmm. we did in this last cycle. So Perry County would be eligible again for something like that again next year. The applications would be due at the end of June next year so we would expect communities to be reaching out to us you know early early in February March sometime trying to schedule some meetings throw some ideas at us um, one thing I want to point out to everyone and this I don't want to get too deep in CDBG tonight because I'm sure you have a lot of other business to deal with and this will probably be covered better in a special meeting however Community development in the past has had an allocation portion, which is simply a pot of money that the county was all, all allocated every two years that they could use for projects. That pot of money has gone away. So the county no longer has this extra or this reserve of CDBG funds that they can add as match dollars to the grant requests that we would be making for things like neighborhood revitalization, which is what we did in the last cycle for the community. Um, that changes the landscape somewhat because <clears throat> there is a match requirement and now the community would have to find some creative way to come up with that match be it um, preliminary design that was paid for on the front end um, in-kind services things of that nature so in the past we've been able to go to the county and say hey you've got this wonderful pot of money can we have 50,000 of this as match to leverage to try to pull this 500,000 into the community? Now we don't have that resource. So match is gonna be key. Key and the big hurdle, I think, for every community. There are other grants out there if you're just looking for direct infrastructure stuff through CDBG. They also require match, but that would be like a critical infrastructure grant or an RPIG or Repub uh, residential public infrastructure grant which is a larger pot of money for like a large sewer project or a sewer treatment plant. Um, the critical infrastructure would be a smaller scale operation, but again, it would come back to obviously critical infrastructure, right? Sure. We're not gonna repave your roads with that, but we could rebuild flood and drainage or we could put in water line systems, things of that nature. So all those are available. Um, the neighborhood revitalization grant is actually on the two year cycle. The other grants that I'm speaking of are what they call open cycle so we could really apply as long as there's a slot open with the county at any point as long as the county of course approves it Proves. because this is the yeah. it's they are the guardians or the gatekeepers of the community development block grant dollars so so there are some options out there we can talk much more about that at another time when you sure. guys have some time and are available to do so just call and set up a meeting with us Chris okay. and uh, we'll figure uh, maybe a workshop and as we dive into towards the end of the year first part of next year as we kick off we'll we'll revisit that yeah I think I think it's going to be very helpful it's just going to uh, require some creative thinking on the on our parts and on the parts of the community to find that match so sure all right. Well, hey, I thank you all very much for your time tonight. I'm going to slip out. Thank you. And I uh, hope you all have a good evening and a good meeting. And call if you need anything, okay? We'll do. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Have a good night. I need a motion to approve the fiscal officer's minutes from the previous meetings. So moved. Any discussion on those minutes? Roll call. Mr. Hampton? Yes. Mr. Locke? Yes. Mr. Loomis? Yes. Mr. Redfern? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. 
Mr. Walters. Yes. Final reports this evening. Need a motion to approve the fiscal officer's financial reports. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Under that motion to approve the mayor's court report for September of 2022. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. <clears throat> We approve the next report. Just go ahead and give council an overview there for the reconciliation here for June. It's um, not a typo. No, it's not. June's was a mess. I had Brittany help me with it. Um, there was a few things messed up that Marilyn must have put in, so it took a while to get figured out. We finally got it, so hopefully next meeting I'll have a couple more to get caught up. So. We need a motion to approve the uh, bank reconciliation for June 2022. Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. We messed that up. Huh? We messed uh, it up. I don't know who messed it up. There was just stuff in there that was all out of whack that we had to fix. So. Jan, anything on the list this evening? Oh, there's lots going on. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking for an update on anything in particular? Any updates on Cherry Lane? No, that bank attorney's no longer responding to me. No. So I will try again. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have. Yeah. Question. I was hopeful she was responsive quickly at first, but right. nothing since then. I have a question on it. Yeah. Uh, that uh, these people from uh, the Brown family contact me. I run into them at a, another uh, event, and they brought it up to me again, wanting to know if there's anything we can do up to that section of property that we can't get access to. Meaning, is it? Can we do anything with the alley up to? That property line proceed forward that with that. Mean, I guess that would be up to council. It would be best to get the the thing to go all the way through. It won't go all the way through without his cooperation. Well, that that's more or less that's a pretty I, significant part of it. And I'm not sure that you'd want to go to the expense and trouble and if you're not going back. to do the whole thing. You'd have to go back and do it again. Well, but I told him there may be trouble, but my only suggestion, and I'm presenting this to you as our solicitor and council and mayor too as we maybe uh, proceed with eminent domain and take that for the to complete the project so all parties involved are in favor except this one individual and I, it's my understanding that some bank is holding the title to the property I don't know if the bank yeah the bank does have it now yeah so uh, would our chances be better for eminent domain through that than uh, with not dealing with him now since he's no longer a resident there I don't believe oh, he's, he's still there. is he still know. there yeah he's still there I don't know Fred that we would have jurisdiction to do eminent domain I have to go back and look at the maps again but I think that portion is not within the village limits I mean, we're trying to resolve it by an easement agreement amongst all the property owners and the village. It's not actually village property, and I'm not sure it's even within the village limits. I think that portion might be in the township, but the township has never really maintained it, and so we were just but going to... But the village to, has. Yes. Yeah, but we're but, saying we never had But it's not easement. technically within the corporation limits, I guess is what I'm saying. So right. to take it by eminent domain, I would have to look. I'm just. But all the, over the years, we've showed good faith in maintaining that. Whether we did not have access to it, that maybe that's our our fault. But that being said, it's not know. really any faults. It's just a matter of jurisdiction. Okay. I mean, 
and I could look into it just off the top of my head I think that would be a potential problem it would be like trying to take property from Roseville okay I mean, it's could, just it's outside of our jurisdiction <laughs> okay so uh, is there anything that township trustees can do to help us that I don't know okay so just that may be another avenue to try going, to resolve the problem yeah they could possibly look at going on somebody else's property further too and trying to bypass Saffel, but I think I ran that past the engineer and he didn't think it was very feasible okay but I mean it's it's something the property owners there could probably collectively get together and and go for but that's all a private okay. easement it's not a road okay <laughs> thank you yeah. It's not even hard. It? No, it's not village property. It's not township property. That particular portion, that's just that was part of the problem. Of property. Getting securing it and getting it done before it wasn't an actual easement for us to do there. It's it's private property. Right. And then the domain would be a lengthy, longer process than it has been in the past, correct? Oh, I mean, it's. If, if you had all your ducks in a row and the moon and the sun lined up and everything <laughs> and the stars come it together. could probably come together in, I don't know, four to six months if if, if it's proper action. He'll be out of there by then. I don't know. What's that? Do you think that the bank would want to exercise their right and sell that property so they can recoup their money and have him gone and exercise the eviction notice and say, let's go? I don't quite get it. Obviously, I do bank work, but we do it on a different scale, and it's local. It's not a great big giant bank that is all over the United States and hires what they call foreclosure mills to take care of the foreclosure cases. Down there, one next to me, the house sold for... Like seventy grand two years ago, lost it, went to foreclosure. Bank sold, bought it back for like pennies on the dollar, twenty some thousand bucks. Turned around within sixty days and sold for seventy eight. Yeah, I mean, you would think with the way the real estate market is, you'd want to recoup as quick as you could. I don't know. I'll take a look at that. option <clears throat> thank you I also looked at the ARPA funds issue for the bridge I don't know if you got the message on that okay yes you got that taken. thank you EMS contract went to route today I found a couple more changes to make on it when I was sitting up here so <laughs> I'll send you a finally revised version electronically okay. but look over it in the meantime in case there are any changes that you want Mayor, I didn't get the ARPA fund email I don't have the cell phones Anymore. Oh, that's I right. I get that. Uh, to the, well, to the best of our knowledge, and with uh, Jan's interpretation of the language in that, we are good to uh, go. Good to go. Sweet. So we've earmarked thirty-two thousand uh, dollars from the ARPA funds to uh, do the emergency repairs to uh, the North Buckeye Bridge, which is underway, by the way. Yes. Uh, as of Thursday evening, they had one section of the decking off completely, and uh, work continues. And again, fingers crossed. We can get it off there, get new I beams put in there, and a deck put back on it, and blacktop it and, and stuff before the blacktop plants close. Yeah. yeah. 70, 70 degree weather is looking good early next week, so. Keep her moving. Under finance, this evening, need a motion to approve uh, resolution 99 2022, approve the transfer of funds for the interfund transfers. List of, fund, uh, list of transfers this evening are $3,666.67 from Waterworks to the Water Contingency Fund, uh, $3,587.08 from Waterworks to the Waterworks Capital Improvements Fund. $4,951.91 from Waterworks to the Waterworks Reserve, $2,510.17 uh, from Waterworks to the Waterworks Replacement Fund, $675.71 from Street to Street Paving Debt Service, and $10,000 from the Income Tax to the General Fund. That's the list of your transfers. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Rickford. Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Walters? Yes. Next under that, Resolution 100, 
2022 through reallocation supplemental appropriations. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redford. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Next under that, resolution 101 2022. Bills to be paid. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redford. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. And under that, resolution 102 2022. Payroll. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yeah. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Under safety the scene, we had a motion to approve Sarah Sweet to the EMS at ten dollars and fifty cents per hour. So moved. Right. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Chiefs, anything this mm -hmm. evening? The Lions Club visited the firehouse tonight. They had a car show and they took the proceeds from that and donated to the fire department toward $500 toward purchasing equipment and purchased a uh, battery powered chainsaw mm -hmm. with that. Good deal. They're going to go between us and Roseville. From now on, they said. Yep, very nice gesture. Yeah. Appreciate that a lot. Brian, anything? Yep. Okay. I'm sure, uh, any applications? Anybody pounding on the door? Under legislative this evening, need a motion to approve ordinance 2716, changing the price to $120,000 for the reservoir property. So moved. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Law. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Mayor. Yes, Ron. I think if you, you ought to stick an additional five thousand dollars on that, if that mattress and that chair and that couch is still out there, we'll market it as furnished. Let's <laughs> <laughs> call an out, out, outdoor uh, lounge chair. Outdoor, outdoor living. Yeah, yeah, outdoor living in its finest. Get closer to nature. Need a motion to accept ordinance 2716, changing the price to $120,000 for the reservoir property. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Any other old business come for council this evening? Um, Dean Grimmett was in and he just wanted to make sure um, he that everyone knew how much the food pantry appreciated the donation um, awesome. with the food prices and everything going up so considerably he just wanted to make sure everyone knew that they really needed it they were in need and <clears throat> they were very thankful to get it trying to take care of our own yes Important. The same lot of stuff up day school. Are they starting that already? Wait. Yes. There they was. Asbestos abatement began last Tuesday uh, on the East School. And um, just a little bit of an update that should continue this week through the end of this week. Uh, hopefully, it'll be finished up uh, at the end of this week, early next. And then it will be on the uh, list for demo. And knock on wood, uh, with with everything. Hope hopefully everything will go okay. Uh, that, that it'll be a, a forgotten memory here soon by the end of the year. So, 
Good deal. That's that's the game plan by the end of December. By the that's end of the year. By the end of December. Yes. Wow. I yes. And then I'll get up to it in spring. I think. Yes. Yes. End of the year. Sweet. So let's keep our fingers crossed and. Keeping that on the yeah yeah. But uh, thanks, Billy. Appreciate that. You reminded me. <laughs> Any new business come for council this evening? Uh, one thing, Mayor, uh, for workshop. Uh, I want to continue the discussion about the stormwater in Delaware and Mohegan Drive. Keep it on the table developing that tell the guys some thanks they were out there the next next day doing some some patch-up work I, I told one of the citizens Janie I told her I was like it's gonna be band-aids until we can yeah do something really good with it so to wait now. one more year one, one more year yep it's on it's the, gonna be a band-aid it's on the page gonna have to be band-aided again sure when they're winter, aware of that now too there's some holes coming through when winter comes in the freezing and thawing going on, yeah, you know, in the spring, but yes, it's uh, it's on the list. And tell the guys thanks for yeah. paying the next fall. Do, yep. do a great job, they do. Just like that. thank them every now and then. Lace, you got anything soon? Um, Courtney, Fred, and I went to the Iowa Municipal Conference, a lot of great information, a lot of great people. We learned, you know, a good bit, sat through a lot of meetings, um, some more relevant than others, but it was a great experience. Good. You know, good. We'll definitely well, go kind next of, year. Usually they have, like, topics of meetings you can go to, you kind of pick which ones you want to Yeah, they had to. a few, like, breakout sessions where you kind of pick right. around. And there used to be, most of them were like that. You, you just, most of them were not. Yeah. I think there were two or three where you could pick what yeah. you went to, but the rest of them were just big meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everybody in the room, and this is what we're doing. Yeah, the, the breakout Back meetings. Back when I went years ago, where they were, those were good because you could actually go into something that. Yeah, that's we what like those that's what we were saying. Is that's where we felt we got the most information. Yeah, um, it was smaller groups. It was more relevant to what we were going through here. Mm -hmm. um, more questions and answers. It was, yeah. So it was, it was and we let the, uh, one of the uh, municipal league trustees know that too at the one breakfast when we had one trustee from what was uh, Mr. Years ago when I went, that's what they were. A lot we of let him know that that was the you know, American very, was still mayor. It's how long ago was it? They voiced their opinion how beneficial that was for them, the breakout sessions, mm -hmm. more so than, you know. A lot of them structured. You had a couple big meetings that everybody went to, but the rest of them were meetings like you could. Sign up for and go to that yeah. will yeah. pertain to smaller government, smaller yeah. government yeah. and mm -hmm. whatnot. I not, not fair when you throw a big when you throw, when you throw in Columbus or even a Zanesville and sure. uh, with, with Crooksville, you're going to have different yeah. numbers yeah. and yep. different, different issues yeah. and different problems yeah. all around. Mm -hmm. But it was a good experience. I'm good. glad we were able to go. Yeah, um, good. It was a good time. Nothing else come for council. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Hampton. Yes. Mr. Locke. Yes. Mr. Loomis. Yes. Mr. Redfern. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walters. Yes. Adjourn. Yeah.